don't do that. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna have to fly go back to America. Don't do that. Okay. Maybe. Either way. Yes, ho! My name's Elizabeth, but you can call me Liz. And in today's video, it's gonna be another Let's Talk About Anime with Kekan Shoujo. No Saki kun, so if you wanna see that, keep on watching. But first, let's get it. But before I say anything, I should put a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Because I am going to be talking about Sekan Shoju no Saki kun more in depth about its characters and uh, overall plot and my thoughts. So. so the English name is Monthly Girls no Saki kun. The Japanese name is Gekan Shoujo Nozaki-kun and it aired from July 2014 to September 2014. It's a summer 2014 anime. The genre, obviously, comedy, romance, in school. Give me a shoujo anime that doesn't happen in a high school. I want to see like at least college. Like apparently in Japan, like you don't you don't find love bubble after high school. If you don't find it in high school, you are screwed. <laughs> Basically, I know some people care about it. I don't really like. I don't know. Uh, the studio was by Toga Kobo, who has also animated Himoto Umaru Chan. You know the girl with the orange. Yeah, they also animated that one. So let's get into the characters. So technically. It has seven main characters, I guess. Well, not main, but like we follow the lives of like the seven characters. Obviously, just like in an, any other ma magazine and any other manga and any other anime, there are a bunch of other characters like the college girl, the one editor who Nozaki kun doesn't like, who is now the editor of the college girl, uh, the editor that Nozaki kun loves, Nozaki kun's editor. Obviously, there's a lot more, but I'm just going to give you kind of like the brief introduction of the seven characters and then, yeah. So first is Chiyo Sakura, who is voiced by Ozawa Ari, who has been in The Promised Neverland as Connie. So basically, she's the main female, female protagonist. She's the one we follow throughout the anime. She is also works with Nozaki-kun on his manga and she fills in the beta, which is basically filling in the background with black or anything that needs to be filled in with black. Then we have Umetaro, Umetaro Nozaki-kun, who is voiced by Yuichi Nakamura, who has been in Haikyuu as Kuro, and who was also in Jujutsu Kaisen as Gojo Satoru. So Nozaki-kun also has the pen name of Yume no Sakiko. He is the manga artist and his manga is called Let's Fall in Love. He's a shoujo manga artist. He really can only do shoujo manga. Um, I would say he's kind of oblivious, especially when it comes to how much Chiyo likes him. Um, he really, like, his life literally revolves around his manga. Everything he does is for his manga. He really also is, like, really loves his own, um, characters of his manga. Sabaro Suzuki and Mamiko. Then we have Mikoto Mikoshiba, who is voiced by my BA husband, Nobuhito Kamoto, who has been in Boku no Hiro Katenya as Bakugo Katsuki. Um, he also works with Nozaki-kun. He draws the flowery backgrounds and anything other to enhance the protagonist's charm. He's often called Mikorin, and I will call him Mikorin throughout the rest of the video. Um, he was basically Mamiko's inspiration. He is a mo otaku who basically likes 2D things. He collects 2D figures and any other 2D things. He really likes it. Um, he's kind of like, you know, that pretty boy. He has that pretty boy swag. Some people would call him a playboy, but he also gets really embarrassed. Like he says shit like, oof, me? How can I get a girlfriend? Like, there won't be enough of me to go around. Immediately after he says whatever he says, he immediately kind of like starts cringing and is embarrassed and he's like, <gasps> uh, why did I say that? That type of personality. <laughs> he's so cute though. And then we have Yu Kashima, who is voiced by Nakahara Mai, who has been in my team romantic comedy snafu as Yuki no Shita Haruno. <laughs> I love Hiki. <laughs> <laughs> Hickey's my favorite character from that. But yeah, she's been in that. Um, 
She's basically, she's a girl, but she's basically the prince of the school. Like all the girls fawn over her. She and Mikorin were rivals in the first year until like everyone realized that Kashima is like so much better academically and everything else. She, you know, that pretty boy swag that Mikorin has, she has that pretty girl swag. She can steal your girlfriend and you would be like, damn, but like, how can you hate her? <laughs> Um, she's in the drama club and she uh, really admires Hori Senpai. Then we have Masayuki Hori who is voiced by Yuki Ono who has been in Kuroko no Basuke as Kagami Taiga and is Kaius and Titan's Bride which I was like ah, ah. <laughs> oh okay. Um, he is basically the president of the drama club. Um, he like he really likes to beat up Kashima. <laughs> Like I don't I don't know how to describe it, but he likes to beat her up and like she's always late for drama The drama club meetings are her club and he comes and drags her and takes her back He's five foot four So apparently he's too short to be in any of the actual plays to play like the main person in a play But he is the president Um, It is said that he likes a woman with long legs like Kashima and apparently he always like whenever like people are like Mikorin or Kashima who's the most handsome he's like uh Kashima duh uh Kashima has his you know that perfect face that he's looking for and I'm like um I don't know if Hori Senpai likes her or not I also don't know if Kashima likes him or not then we have Yusuki Iseo voiced by Sawashiro Miyuki who has been in Durara Durarara uh, Selti, sir, listen. Um, she's very oblivious. The basketball team uses her to show, oh, this is how you should not play. This is how you should not be a team player. She traumatizes at the basketball club. But she also is, has a really, like, good voice, like a siren. They call her the Lorelei, Lore, Lorelei of the choir club. She has a beautiful voice, that of a siren. But she also traumatizes people. <laughs> And I think she likes Waka. Like I think I think Loki she likes him, but like she doesn't know how to express it. I think maybe. They have, we have Wakamatsu Hirotaka, who is voiced by Ryo Kimura, who has been in Haikyuu as Bokuto Kotaro, as well as Kuroko no Basuke as Kise. Um, he eventually comes to work. Oh, Hori Senpai also works for uh, Nozaki Kun, and he does the backgrounds in exchange for scripts for the drama club that Nozaki Kun writes. So Waka also eventually ends up working for Nozaki-kun and he does the erasing and the tone work and like this poor dude I feel like so bad for him because he's very traumatized by Sale. She's the one that goes and like whenever the basketball team is like I feel like we're losing our like sportsmanship we're losing our bonding team moments that you sail to like reinforce that and like she's always there and he's part of the basketball club and team and she really traumatizes him to the point that this boy has insomnia and then one day he hears the Lorelai her singing and he immediately falls in love with her and is able to fall asleep so now he's really in love with Lorelai the only problem is that he doesn't know that the person who traumatizes him, aka Seo, is also the person that relieves him from his trauma. He's also, I think, very like innocent because he he likes Seo but doesn't like Seo. She traumatizes him, but he's also like the idea of her with other boys kind of like doesn't sit right with him. So I'm like, I feel like I don't know what to feel for you, bro. So I want you to close your eyes. Close them. Now think of the person you really like in a romantic sense. Boy or girl, I don't care. You know, close your eyes, imagine them like you are ready to confess your feelings. You are like, I cannot hold this any longer, this love I have for you. I need to confess it. And you go up, you know, you're you're in school after class, you're like, I gotta, I gotta tell you, man, I gotta tell you, girl. You go up to them. You know, and instead of saying something cool like, um, oh, I don't know, I like you, or, um, you know, please go out with me, or any of that stuff, because you're so nervous, you're so nor nervous, you tell them, I am your fan. Now, what, what do you think your crush or the person you like would say? Would they be like, oh, um, thank you, I don't know you, who are you? Or like, oh, I'm your fan too, like, ah! And you start dating, what, would, what do you think would happen, hmm? I'll give you a minute. 
Now, in any of those scenarios that you imagine, did you ever, did it ever cross your mind? Did you ever imagine that, um, the dude you like will suddenly, like, give you his autograph with not even his name, but the name Yumen Sakiko, with the name Yumen Sakiko written on it? And you're like, oh, thanks, I guess. And then the dude suggests, how about we go to my house? Mm -hmm. You go to his house, but then you realize once you're in his house, like, holy, I'm in my, like, this person I like, I'm in their house. And then he's like, oh, but first, can you help me with something? And you're like, yeah, sure. And you spend the next four hours filling in beta. And then you realize, holy crap, this person is a manga artist. And the person you like is like, um... You've been working four hours on beta. How did you not realize that? And then you go home, and you compare that, you realize, you have a sudden realization that Yumi no Sakiko, I've heard that name before. You go to your room, you go to your manga collection, you open it. The manga, Let's Fall in Love, Yumi no Sakiko. And that's why you realize, Nozaki, the person you like, is actually a really famous manga artist. Because that's basically what happens in episode 1 of Nozaki-kun. Chiyo has been like in love with him for about a year. She goes to confess, but because she's so nervous, she says, I'm your fan. Nozaki-kun, being the manga artist that he is, bless his soul, gives her his autograph. Then proceeds to go to his house, have her help him, fill in beta for the next four hours. And ta -da! You made a new friend! <laughs> This man, I swear, bless his soul. He like, he honestly kind of like mothers Chiyo more than anything. Like, I think he likes her, but I don't know if it's the same like that Chiyo has for him. And throughout the episode, like you realize that Nozaki-kun lives revolves around his manga. Everything he does is for his manga. So sometimes like later on in the episode when all the four guys are hanging out he's like go on continue more because he's trying to do kind of like a sleepover for his own manga and you see like oh <laughs> like his life revolves around manga everything he does is for his manga and as the more episodes continue you meet more of the seven characters so you meet mikorin and chiyo realizes that mamiko i think she realizes or nazaki kun tells her Mikorin is a uh, inspiration behind Mac Miko because this dude is all like uh, uh, like uh, pretty boy swag who but then immediately afterwards he's like uh, Sakura, Sakura help me so he has like that kind of like sundre attitude that Mamiko has and she was like yeah I can see it right away and then because he needs to have other characters in his manga, Nozaki-kun goes and meets new people like Seo, who he writes a character based on Seo, and he sees Kashima, and he's like, oh, another good-looking person, and he meets all these people, and like, he realized that a lot of them end up working with Nozaki-kun on his manga. So Chiyo fills in the beta, Mikurin does the flowery backgrounds for to enhance the protagonist's um, charm, Hori Senpai does kind of like the backgrounds in exchange for drama club scripts. Hori Senpai doesn't want people to know that he does the backgrounds. And I believe of all the people that work with Nozaki kun, Mikorin is the only one who doesn't know that Hori Senpai does the backgrounds. And Waka eventually kind of comes to work with Nozaki kun to do the erasing and later on do the tone work. So they all end up like working with the Nozaki kun and it's basically kind of like oh this is how a manga artist life basically is how he goes around kind of like people watching and be like oh this person could be a good inspiration for this this and this and then as well you kind of see the relationship between the three couples excluding Mikorin kind of like develop and how they are so between Chiyo and Nozaki kun their relationship, like she likes him, but I don't think he gets that she she likes him in that way. I think he kind of just likes her as a good friend, but she's also the only one who can say anything bad about his manga. And he's okay with that. So I think he does like her eventually. 
especially with that fireworks episode i'm still not convinced that he just said oh them fireworks be pretty yo and then we have the second couple who is kashima and hori senpai and basically she basically the reason she even went to the same school was because of him she saw him in middle school and she was like this man like whenever he's in a play he delivers he's so cool he delivers it perfectly so she really admires him and she gets kind of like jealous when he doesn't come and beat her up or when he sees her with like a bunch of the girls and he's like oh whatever like she gets jealous but she also misinterprets everything that hori senpai does and i think hori senpai likes kashima because he said that he likes a girl with long legs like kashima kashima's face is his ideal type and whenever people say mikuri or Kashima. He's always like, uh, Kashima's more handsome, duh. So I think he does like her, but he doesn't realize it yet. And then we have the sweet, sweet traumatizer, the traumatized. Waka and Seo. Waka loves Lorelai. He doesn't know that Seo's Lorelai. Seo is very oblivious, but she still treats Waka very well. Like, she takes him out for dinner. They go on dates. She buys him stuff. Seo is very interesting because he's trying to be more like tough and trying to be like Seo, like back the fuck up, like why are you traumatizing me? But he does it in a way based on Nozaki Kun's manga. Waka basically is trying to be like, I'm gonna fight Seo, that's what's gonna get her to leave me alone, stop traumatizing me. And he takes advice from the manga and basically gives her a love letter. And even when he's trying to tell her like, you traumatizing me why he does a very bad job of it and he basically kind of confesses in love and then these two go on a movie and nozaki kun encourages this because he's trying to like draw another thing for his manga i mean and he's like go go on a date and tell me what happened afterwards nozaki kun is always encouraging shenanigans because he takes those shenanigans gives them a cute little voila and makes puts it into his manga and then you get to the final episode of the fireworks episode and you kind of see how each couple kind of like eventually ends up meeting with each other and kind of like just enjoying the festival. Mikorin kind of bites its little cute little capsule. But at the final, se final scene you kind of see like both Chiyo and Nozaki-kun and they're on top of like this little jungle gym thing kind of like watching the fireworks and nozaki couldn't say something but you can't hear what he says but then eventually he's like oh, aren't the fireworks so pretty i still don't believe that's what he said <laughs> i want to believe he said something cute but knowing nozaki could he probably was like oh i'm gonna include this in my manga but yeah i recommend you watch it i really do think nozaki it's Kekan Shoujo no Zaki-kun is really like funny. There is a bunch of like hilarious moments. Like Chiyo's always in her head. Mikorin's always as embarrassed. Kashima's always like, oh, pretty girl swag. Um, Seo's always traumatizing Waka. Hori-senpai is always dragging Kashima who happens to like it. It's really hilarious. I really do recommend using it. I think if you're having kind of like a bad day or like you need an introduction to kind of like a shoujo anime i think this is a really good one because it kind of like i want to say makes fun of shoujo anime but it makes fun of shoujo anime because this is the, from the perspective of a manga artist so this is like he has to do all this and he takes everything that he sees everything that his friends do and puts it like a little flowery vibe to it and mwah, let's fall in love <laughs> but yeah i really do recommend like Definitely my favorite character is either Mikorin, Kashima, or Waka. Mikorin because this dude like, he says the most darnest things and then like afterwards he gets embarrassed. Kashima because she has that pretty girl swag, like she can take your girl anytime, all the time. Um, Waka because he's like, he's so innocent, like this poor dude takes manga advice too seriously. But yes, you should watch. Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, tell me what you think about it. Um, question. Have you ever watched Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun? Who's your favorite character? If not, what's your favorite shoujo anime? I feel like I should do more shoujo animes for these. Let's talk about things. Because I tend to do, I tend to usually watch a bunch of either crime or supernatural. 
or um, sports anime, but I think I'll do. Like I said, I do really do love my teen com romantic comedy snuffle. Hickey is like my ideal <laughs> person, low-key. Um, low-key, I like the mass holy. Um, yeah, if you have any other recommendations, whether shoujo or not shoujo, please let them down below in the comments. Um, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, E underscore Gomez Liz. Um, yeah. Comment, like, subscribe, subscribe to my channel for more random shit because that's what I'm here for, folks. And yeah, bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.